How about this one? Huh? Huh? Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. How about this one? This one here? See? Fine, too. That's fine, too. Marty? Mm -hmm. Fine is a four-letter F word. <laughs> I'm looking for something in the range of fabulous or <laughs> phenomenal. Oh, what about this one? Here. See? Does this scream out matron of honor or what? Matron of honor. Who in the world came up with a term like that? You know what that screams out? Thick ankles and orthopedic shoes. Okay, okay. How, how, how about we call you best woman? Best woman. That's fabulous. But the best woman still needs something to wear. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, as long as you're comfortable, that's fine. Fine. Fab fabulous, fabulous with me. All I want, and I'm just thrilled, that you are going to be on Lantano Mountain when Patrick and I take our vows. I'm thrilled, too. Mm -hmm. Lantano Mountain. Lantano Mountain, that should be pastoral and uh, yet sophisticated, like this. This. This? No, this. This? How about that one? If you're this decisive in court, all your clients are going to end up in Statesville. See, Marty, marriage has nothing to do with a trial. It's not, nothing like a trial. Most of them. Kind of. This one. That one. That one? Colors fabulous on you. Fabulous. I knew that. Mm -hmm. I knew that already. I just was throwing all the rest of them in here to test you. <laughs> you know what they will do? Why don't we just leave all the dresses here, just in case? Just in case what? Just in case we exercise our woman's prerogative and change our mind. <laughs> you see, I'm going to be here for all the pre-wedding hours. Help with hankies and hand-holding, whatever. You're incredible, you know that? Why? Really, I'll tell you. Because, well, you stood by Patrick through all of his trials. Oh. And you were there for me, during mine. And now you're throwing us a party tonight, and, and, and you're... You don't have to hold my hand tomorrow. It's what the best woman does. <laughs> Besides, it's all planned. I got Patrick and Bo sequestered in the garret. You and I will be sitting here doing some major prep time. Mm -hmm. I could sure use it. Oh, yeah? What do you mean? I don't know. You and, you and Patrick, you... The, the obscene joy that the two of you radiate, if I could just bask in it for a little bit, maybe I'd absorb it and go back to Bo a new woman. <laughs> I think he'd like a new woman. <laughs> Wouldn't they all? Mm. But you are right when it comes to Patrick and me. This really has been an incredible... saga. Dream. I don't even know what to call it. Love story will do. Yeah. Think about it. If before I even knew his name, he grabbed me kissed me and said that we had to pretend that we were lovers. Oh. And everything from that first incredible night on Inish Craig, it, it's, it still holds true. All the passion mm. and the threat. Are you not hungry, Michael? All need to get done and get out. Group, I didn't come here for the bloody food. I don't want to be here at all. Well, Landview was not my favorite destination either. My last trip ended in manacle wrists, thanks to Don Art. No, it was your own bloody fault that you're back here again. Because you couldn't keep your mouth shut to Todd Manning about the Whiting case. You can't be sure of that. I can be sure that Manning Thornhart and his fiance could all feed my name to the cops if I don't get to them first. You will, you will, will you relax? Relax, relax, he says. I was relaxed, I was very relaxed until you got greedy. And now I have to rush back to America to dodge a bomb that, uh, uh, that, that, that went off over 12 years ago. It'll take you as long to finish that muck. Will you hurry up? Well, uh, Dennis, would you trot yourself over to the local newspaper offices, the Banner and the Sun, and pick me up a week's worth of each, right? And get me um, three uh, maps of Landview. Three? Mm hmm. It, uh, it'll save us anybody looking over anybody's shoulder. That puts some of us on edge. Oh, come on. Come on. No, your food will be there when you get back. Come on. There's the only Irishman under the sun that can't put two words together. What he puts together are bombs. O'Hara may be slow with a phrase, but he's lightning quick with a gun. <laughs> All right, 
I've had it. Oh, oh, come on. Look at all this cake that's left. I can't eat another bite. Yeah, but that's what these three wedding gatherings are all about. You get all full of, uh, of good food, words of wisdom, and then the ceremony seems like a relief, you know? But your marriage is off to a good start. <laughs> See? You've got it all figured out. Except my own marriage. <laughs> I have need some more cake, then. <laughs> you have a cake. I am. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks for my, uh, my lunch, and thanks for sparing me the words of wisdom. Oh, not so fast. That's my business. Uh, Patrick, Marty is a very special lady, so I have one word of wisdom for keeping her happy. Gentleness. <laughs> well, in my book, Hi. you have to pay attention. And you see, if you listen to everything Marty has to say, you can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta make sure that that communication is two-way. See, as long as you tell your wife what you really need, she's going to respect that. Unless, of course, you need a motorcycle. How about you, Mel? Any words of uh, wisdom for our boy? Well, I, I do have a suggestion, yes. It um, doesn't involve emotional well-being as much as it involves physical. All right, let's have it. When are the um, Irish authorities coming to question you? A few days after the wedding. All right. I don't want to uh, cast a a pall on such a convivial gathering, but my advice has to do with protection. Something tells me you and Marty could be in real danger. German. Uh, how may I help you? I'm Cassie Carpenter. I just flew in from the United States and I'm here to see my father, David Rinaldi. He's expecting me. Ah, yes, for Carpenter. I'm afraid there is a problem. What do you mean there's a problem? Uh, please, uh, take a seat and I'll find Dr. Klaus immediately. Frau Carpenter, welcome to Austria. Thank you. Dr. Klaus, your nurse said that there's been a problem with David. Um, my father, is he any worse? Um, I fear that his condition is better than I realized. What do you mean? Late this morning, your father dressed and left his room. I spoke to him in the, uh, in the hall. I was struck how his mood had changed appreciably since that evening when you called. He was quite e e elated then, and his spirits improved remarkably in the days following. I was puzzled by his anxiety this morning, as I knew he was looking forward to your visit, and you were scheduled to arrive tonight. And? He left the sanitarium. Where did he go? I don't know, Frau Carpenter. He has disappeared. That's a cheery thing for the bride and groom to take with them into their marriage. Todd Manning's been running stories on the reopening of the Lord Whiting case since that decision was made, correct? And that's another thing that makes The Sun such a quality paper. Well, Todd's not the only one in the bomb wagon. The international press has been blaring Patrick's name across three quarters of the Western world. Now, now what difference does it make? Patrick is innocent. I just hate to see some Irish extremist or uh, any other denizen of the lunatic fringe, for that matter, come to the conclusion that Patrick knows more about Lord Whiting's demise than he's let on. Oh, you'd think they might target him out of their own paranoia because of what they've done. Well, the golden rule of criminality, cover thy butt, even if thou art only worried it's exposed. What do you suggest Margaret and I do now? Well, 
I think you should get on with your lives and let the Landview PD give you round-the-clock protection until this inquiry and the accompanying brouhaha is over. I'm really not that important that, that I'm going to be the target of anything. I wouldn't be so sure. I think Mel's right. I don't need protection, neither does Margaret. Look, I'm all too familiar with the paranoid criminal mentality, and I tell you, these guys don't necessarily think or reason before they shoot. Patrick, do it for Marty. Ah, I see. And that'll give her peace of mind. To have policemen running around, shadowing her all day. You know what it'll do? It'll, it'll scare her. She'll be more scared than knowing that we're not out of the woods. Well, but at least you've got friends in among the trees. Us. Absolutely. We'll help you convince Marty. No. <clears throat> All right. I agree. In the protest. Word of wisdom alert. If you have to show up with lousy news, it's always a good idea to bring along a terrific gift. Yeah. I, I would love to bring her something special. A gift that not only symbolizes your love for Marty, but is also totally practical. <laughs> something... A gift that gives, keeps on giving, you know? Something that will touch her every day. That's a tall order. It can be filled. Follow me. Oh, that'll do it. <coughs> I want to see what that is. Made in action. Well, when your man has troubles, it's tough to have anything else matter, isn't it? I know, and I try not to think about it, but it's, well, it's always worse at night and when I'm alone. Well, you won't be alone for much longer, especially at night. Mm. Because this best woman is going to do her best to make sure that all the questioning of Patrick goes as painlessly as possible. You and I, we've, um, we've shared a lot of the same fears. I promise you, Marty, as kindred survivors, I will do whatever I can to help. So don't worry. Thanks. I can't afford to. I have a fairy tale wedding to go to tomorrow. Yes, you do. You mm -hmm. sure do. Besides all that extra anxiety, it can't be good for the baby. Absolutely not. Never is. Mm -mm. What baby? I... Well, I told Bo that I was pregnant when you were at the spa. He didn't pass that news on to you? No. No, he didn't. But this... It, it must have slipped his mind. No. Well, it, it, it's possible. No, no, nothing slips Bo's mind. I mean, he still remembers his locker combination from the seventh grade. Just nothing slips Bo's mind. Especially nothing as important as you and Patrick having a baby. Which is probably why he didn't tell me. I, I don't understand. No, never mind. It's not important. What's important is that you guys are going to have a baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so wonderful. Thank you. So once you do... <laughs> I do in the spring. The spring? Mm -hmm. The spring. Count back nine months. Stop that. Oh, come on. Come you. on. Tell me. Tell me everything. I want to know all about that night. Was it really romantic? Did you know right away? Hmm? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. And, oh, yes. Oh! Oh. <sighs> I wish I was having a baby this spring. I thought I was pregnant a few months ago, but I, I was wrong. Oh, well, try again. I mean, that's the fun part anyway. Oh, nah, it's too late. It's never too late. Well, it's too late for me. I'm... I'm perimenopausal. <laughs> Can't be. You're, you're too young. Yes, I am. I'm too young, but I am. Did Larry diagnose that? Well, I sure didn't. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's all right. I wallowed in self-pity for a while, but I'm, I'm, I'm slowly coming around to acceptance, sort of. Kind of. Sorry. Yeah. It's all right. But I mean, I mean, look at it this way. You, you had a baby. Mm-hmm. And you've got both. Well, oh, that's Bo, quite a package. package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just. Uh, I always wanted to share a baby with Bo, you know? <laughs> but if Bo and I can't be parents together, 
Then at least we can enjoy the experience vicariously for you and Petra. <laughs> you may want to take that back when I lean on Auntie Nora to babysit for the newest thorn. Well, you just give me that snookums any time, but don't expect them back. <laughs> That's for sure. <sighs> Wonderful, though. I mean, how do you feel? Do you have any, like, weird cravings, like peanut butter pizza or cantaloupe with sardines? Oh, that is gross. No. I mean, if you have any kind of strange lustings, mm -hmm. you just let me know. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure the caterers provide. Actually, there is one thing that I crave. Peace and quiet. Instead of all that noise with the Lord Whiting trial and cases, I, I just... I would love to be able to hear Patrick's footsteps coming up the walk and the cooing of our little baby upstairs in that crib. I don't think the caterers could handle that. <laughs> but I'll certainly do everything in my power to help make that happen. Oh, what are you? A bloody surgeon. He's here to remove some undesirable foreign bodies. And there's two of the three. <laughs> Striking couple, huh? Uh, Thornhart always did pick the head turners. Mm. And aren't we the lucky ones to arrive at this festive time just when the papers are listing their every move for our convenience? At what church will they be? And on the nuptials will take place atop of uh, Lantano Mountain at midday tomorrow, followed by a reception at the country club. <laughs> Sweet. Stupid. Oh, and there's our third patient, Manning. Yep. Charge of the papers. He lives... He lives here, on High Street in a penthouse. Right. Let's go, then. We'll hit him at home. Oh, I wouldn't advise that. That's a high-visibility building. What I'd suggest is that you get him between his office and there. Uh, that way you avoid any messy uh, peripheral activity. Where do the other two live? Well, Thornhart lives in a busy part of town in a flat there. Uh, too busy. But his fiancée, Miss uh, Saybrook, has a house alongside the river. Off the road, just the spot to give them their nice, quiet end. I may want the fireworks to have a bit more of a public display. You're a fool. Look, if you want things quick and clean, why ask for trouble? Why don't you ask Scout out Miss Saybrook's house first and then decide? David disappeared? How is that possible? I I'm afraid I don't know. But I have spent the day collecting information, and this is what we know. Early this morning, he received a phone call. I thought perhaps it might have been from you. No. Hello. <clears throat> After I spoke to him in the hall, he left the building by the main entrance and walked down the path towards the, the, the main gates. This was not unusual. He looked forward to his uh, morning stroll. The groundskeeper saw him and waves. Uh, David returned the greeting. The groundskeeper says that he looked quite relaxed, he was in no hurry, but when he reached the gate, a cab pulled up, he got in and drove off. Okay, so the, can we call the cab companies and find out where he went? I did. He drove 40 kilometers to Salzburg and left him at his home. His housekeeper, Mrs. Colby. I spoke to her this afternoon. <laughs> she was stunned at David's arrival. Uh, as you know, his speech is impaired, but he was able to write her a short note saying that, uh, saying that he was quite all right, but there was a personal emergency and he must leave the country immediately. She packed him a small bag, he got some cash and a passport out of uh, his safe. He made a telephone call and a car arrived in 20 minutes and uh, he drove away. Well, is he well enough to do that? I hope so. If, he, if his speech is impaired, then how did he manage the phone calls? With great effort. He can make himself understood. What is this about? This might provide some answers. Found this in his room addressed to you.
Um, I'd, uh, I'd like to share this with you. I would be most interested. My dearest Cassie, please forgive me for what must appear to be an irrational and incomprehensible act in the face of your generosity and grace in making this trip to offer me comfort and renew our relationship. And please know that my affection for you is profound. And I believe that I am acting in your best interests. I have always done what I could to protect you from that day so many years ago when I took you from your mother. But with the hope that we will meet again, I said, my love, your father, David. I, I don't know what to make of this. Nor do I. Why? I mean, why if he truly wanted to see me? I think that he really did. I'm not a sentimental man. I pride myself on my uh, professional objectivity. But that night when we received your call, and I said to your father that you were on the phone and you were proposing a visit. His smile was so luminous. The feeling behind it was so palpable that it brought tears to my eyes. I am so disappointed. Yes, I am sure. And I'm hurt, and I'm angry, and I'm worried about him. Well, if it helps, you know, I don't think that this will jeopardize his physical recovery. He is very responsible about his therapy, and uh, he is a very responsible man. I don't think he will overtax himself. Oh. That is some comfort. <laughs> Do you have any idea what he meant when he wrote that he was acting in your mutual best interest? Or what he might have been protecting you from? I, um, I had a lot of questions to ask him, and... One of them was why he took me away from my mother. I had no sense until now, though, that it may have been to protect me. And the, uh, the phone call? Well, it could have been from anyone, but... Can we have that phone call traced? Not without intervention by the police, which would prove difficult, as there is no uh, suggestion of foul play. What do we do now? Would you be my fairy godmother as well as my best woman? I think I already am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just need to know that everything's going to be okay. Look, there are no witnesses implicating Patrick in the Whiting bombing, and there's no evidence linking him to it, so technically, the Irish authorities have no case. Technically. Well, you just never know what may turn up, which is why I'm going to be parked right next to Patrick in that courtroom through the whole proceeding. All right? Mm -hmm. That way, hopefully, everything will go just as I want it to. Good. No, well, thanks. I needed to hear that. My pleasure. And now I really need to concentrate on our party tonight. <laughs> Don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. Well, from your lips to the caterer's ears, florist. Oh, my gosh. I forgot to call the florist and ask for extra arrangements. Well, I've got a better idea. Yeah? I, wildflowers have time out in my backyard. Why don't we pick those? Oh! <laughs> Come on. Okay. Oh, we got company. Well, I guess we're not going. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I knew. <clears throat> greetings. Hi. Hello. Greetings and salutations and that order. Oh, hey, hey. Hi. How's it going to Brad Central? Hi. Hiya, honey. Hi. Hey. <clears throat> okay. What's going on? Nothing. Oh, yeah. That's a bunch of baloney. I can tell. All of you got the same stupid little grin on your face, and it's giving me the creeps. What on earth could that lady mean? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm a district attorney. <laughs> I never smile. Ah. Are you okay? Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, yes and no. I am going to marry the most beautiful, wonderful woman in the world tomorrow, but mm -hmm. there is some news that she won't like hearing. So I will have my lunchmates deliver it. Please. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> 
It struck us uh, that in these uh, somewhat Dickensian days... The, the worst, no, the best of times and the, the not so hot. That uh, a special gesture ought to be made to both acknowledge your uh, incipient union... Yeah, to make sure the festivities go off without a hitch. So we put our goofily smiling heads together and we came up with it. Commissioner, would you like to tell the bride and groom what they've won? Yes, the city of Landview is going to provide you two personal valets in the form of a couple of uniformed cops that are going to give you 24-hour protection until the Irish authorities have had a chance to question Patrick. Is that protection really necessary? Can't hurt. Oh, I hate this. But I understand it. Tell Landview thank you, and I thank you all very much. It's a relief. Well... I mean, with friends like this, it's more like a blessing. Couldn't ask for anything more. <clears throat> Maybe just one more friend. There she blows. It looks like an old mill. And it is. Converted a long time ago to more domestic pursuits from the grinding of flour. <laughs> and didn't I tell you, nary a sign with the road from here with all that greenery? It is off the beaten track. I'll give it that. Mm, quiet and quaint. But then I wouldn't expect less from the home of Miss Abrook. And I'll wager the inside's full of tasteful, rustic furnishings with thousand shades of green and tan. Maybe you'd like to knock on the front door and ask for the grand tour since you're in such a sentimental mood? I'm not. Ever. Don't forget that I did my level best to kill the lady of the mill and her bow last year. Uh, I'm not forgetting you botched the job. But there's hope for you yet, Thomas. A couple of helping hands this time round. Results are bound to be a lot more satisfying. that one of you is a ventriloquist. I think that was real. Yes, Marty. For 25 <laughs> points and the game, congratulations, you have won the grand prize. Voila. Yet another safeguard for your peace of mind. I think I would have taken door number four or traded it in for door number three or any other Are door. Are you guys kidding? Come on, boy. Come here. Come here. I don't think they're kidding. Come say hi. Uh. I've never had a dog before. Hey. It's the ideal companion. In hell. Hey. Oh, honey, hey, look. Just take a look at his face. I'm Come on. I'm not to. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you she hated dogs, but you wouldn't believe me. That's impossible. No one hates dogs. But a dog is the epitome of loyalty. Couldn't you have found something loyal and cute? Well, I admit he's not the most handsome specimen that they had there to be adopted, but this one is just so... unique. <laughs> That's it. See, he likes you. I know, I like him too. I think he's been in a bunch of fights, though. Yeah, I bet he won them all. <laughs> <laughs> too bad. <laughs> hey, honey. I think you've got a little friend over here. None of my friends have hairy muzzles and four legs. You know what? It's a good thing you two get along. I mean, considering that Bo agreed to take care of the little pooch while the two lovebirds over there on their honeymoon. Thank you, Hank. You're welcome. First it's a motorcycle. Now it's a dog. What's next? Plastic flamingos in the front lawn? No, sorry. Sorry, we're not going to be boarding a flea factory. No, no. Nora. What? We just got the poor little guy out of the pound. Now, sticking him back in a, in a kennel, that would be cruel. Oh, good. Okay, fine. Why don't you fill your house with drool and hair? Well, it clearly states on my lease no pets allowed. And besides, I'm at Carlotta's most nights. Mm. Mel? 
Uh, well, a, a dog's not really suitable for a houseboat. I mean, maybe a water spaniel. Oh. Anyway, I'm uh, generally away most nights, too, at Dorian's place. Give him a chance, I'm sure he'll grow on you. Like a fungus. Can't believe this. My wife really does hate dogs. I was bitten as a child, okay? Some brown, black terrier thing came bit, and I've got the scar to prove it. It's, maybe it's on this leg, but it's... But, but, but this dog, look, so clearly adores you. It probably thinks I'm dinner. No, no, no. Look, the guys at the pound, they had a chance to really check him out, and they say he only bites when provoked. Don't we all? Up on the couch. Up on the couch. Oh, sweetie, come here. There you go. Here, up on the couch. There you go. Up on the couch. See, isn't that much better than that awful, nasty pound that you were in? I don't think he needs to be on the furniture. Oh, I think he does, because he needs to rest. He's been, you know, lonely and everything. Oh, look, yes. Could have rest on the floor. I see. He's a wonderful oh. animal, not only a guard dog, but uh, a fire drill for parenthood. Yes, you just relax. Please let him stay on the couch. Stay on the couch. I don't think we should indulge him. I think we should indulge me because I'm feeling safer already. Isn't that bad? <laughs> the happy couple has a house full. Guests, one wish lose. They'll all be gone by nightfall. And it'll be as quiet as the grave. A taste of things to come. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Seems to me that all our options, this locale has the most advantageous combinations of uh, quick access and swift exit. You may be right. Fair enough. We'll wait here till dark, and that lot's gone off, then we'll bag our love birds. Tonight? Any objections? I just say the idea is to be quick. That's quick, all right. By the time someone's found their bodies in the morning, we'll have had enough time to finish off Manning, too, and be well out of this bloody town. Sounds like a good plan and a workable one. I certainly wouldn't mind being out of here in 12 hours. You can pretty well count on that, Thomas. Dr. Klaus, will you help me? I, in spite of this letter, I, I am still worried about my father. And there has to be some way that we can find him. I have a suggestion. Why don't you stay here tonight? Thank you. I have a hotel room all set up. No, 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 no. We have a most comfortable room available. Tomorrow morning, I will call Frau Kovic. Now, she was very devoted to your father, and... By then, she may have gathered her thoughts and uh, give you some idea of where he may have gone. I'd appreciate that more than I can say. Hey. Hey. He even looks spoiled now. Look he at him. is not. He's Hello. just fine. Aren't you just fine? But I, I do think he has a thing for Nora. Oh, great. If I start getting gift-wrapped bones in the mail, I'll... <laughs> Know exactly who sent them. Oh, you. Will you cut it out? Look at your masters or something. The masters, right. I think I always knew that. See? A dog just cements an already solid relationship. <laughs> Ain't love grand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're still mad at me, aren't you? I think I should go home and get ready for the party. Really mad. I might even have time for a bath. Furious. Again, again. And he knows lots of tricks, too. Watch this. Oh, no. <laughs> you ready? Breathe. Uh. Whoa. How'd you know? That's incredible. I mean, he's just smart as a whip. No, no, wait, there's more. Blink. It's a genius of the breed. Yeah, what a breed would that be exactly? <laughs> well, you can figure that out. You're a genius. <laughs> Honey, I'm sorry I said we bored the dog, but I'll take care of him, okay? I promise. Okay. Are you sorry about the motorcycle, too? Look, I know it seems like you don't particularly like the things I'm bringing home lately, but just look past the stuff, okay? And you'll see me. The guy who might drive you crazy, but the guy who's nuts about you. You're worth more than a motorcycle and a dog any day.
<laughs> I like that. What? <laughs> what you doing to my leg? No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get it off, get it off, get it off. Down, boy, that's good. Down. <laughs> Shocked that ankle molester didn't... Why, why did he wind up in the pound? Why could anyone give away someone so affectionate? That pretty much answers that. Uh, all right, good boy. Let's see who this is. Is Commissioner Buchanan here? Yeah, just a sec. It's all right, they're friends. I'll introduce you to the um, residents later on, but right now I want you to secure this property, okay? Bell can take the front, Santiago around the back, okay? Yes, Commissioner. Thanks. <clears throat> now, this sounds like a big deal, like some kind of emergency. Patrick, I'm the Commissioner of Police. I'm also your best man. In both capacities, I'm a friend to you and Marty, and this is the best way I know to prove that, okay? Excuse me. Um, Cops. How many? Two. One's out front, the other's heading round back. You'd think they'd have read our minds. The, 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 the local police commissioner is a notoriously cautious sort. Uh, if he had his way, he'd, uh, he'd have half the town guarding the other half. <laughs> Whatever. Easy access you were crawling about just now is suddenly a thing of the past. In fact, there's no way to get thrown out of this lady now. At least not here. Might you not uh, cut your losses and uh, leave the country? Not in your life. Do you have an alternate plan in your mind for Thornhearts and Miss Sabo's death? I do. We'll just give Romeo and Juliet the last wedding gift that they'll ever expect. Stay tuned for scenes from the next One Life to Live.